Hi, it's Ian here. Welcome to the first in a series of weekly marketing Q&A videos. Format's quite simple. You send me your questions via email on marketing. I answer them here on video every Tuesday. Now, this first question has been sent in by Glyn, and it's about how to write an initial email autoresponder sequence when people first sign up to your mailing list. Um, so autoresponder sequence, obviously a series of pre-programmed emails that go out when someone takes an action, very often when they join your email list for the first time. Now there are lots of different ways you could write an autoresponder sequence. Um, what I'm gonna give you is kind of the basics and some big things to think about when you're writing that sequence. So you need to start off by really nailing down two things. One is who are your ideal clients that you're writing this um, set of emails for? And in particular, what are their goals, their aspirations, their problems, challenges and issues? Because those are really the things that they care about that they're gonna, that's gonna make them open and read an email. If you're not writing about those topics, then no one's gonna open those emails, no one's gonna read them, it's gonna have no impact. Second thing you need to think about is where do you want to get them? by the end of that autoresponder sequence. Now that's quite dependent on the kind of products and services that you offer. So if like me, you offer online training programs, it should be possible, at least for some people, to offer a low cost entry level training product that people will be willing to buy fairly early on. Um, if you offer coaching services, for example, group coaching or one-to-one -one coaching, you probably should be able to, to get um, at least some people to have a one-to-one -one strategy session with you or a discussion about joining your group coaching program. If you sell really high-end consulting, then maybe your goal is just to build credibility and trust, build a relationship um, so that they're much more likely to buy when the time is right in the future. Now, there's a subtlety here that's worth bearing in mind, and it's that when people first join your email list, they're going to be at different levels of readiness. So some people who join your email list, usually a small percentage, are going to be ready to take action right now, either buy something from you or give you a call to talk about working together. The bulk will probably need more nurturing. You know, they joined your email list to get some free information about a problem they have. They're not yet ready to buy, so they're going to, you're going to need to build further credibility and trust and build a relationship. And that's the goal. That's your default goal with your autoresponder sequence is to ratchet up that credibility and trust, deliver value, build goodwill for that for everyone. But for a small percentage you want to give them the opportunity to buy or to take action if they're ready. But you want to do that in a way that doesn't really annoy, is not so salesy and pushy that it annoys the 95%, 98% of the rest of the people who aren't ready yet. So you've always got that balancing act to do. And I'll talk a little bit about how to do that next. So in terms of your emails, um, there are five things that you want to take into account. I call it Dove P. So let's go through those one by one. The first thing you want to do is deliver. What I mean by deliver is usually when people join your email list and you've offered them some kind of lead magnet. So it may be a free PDF, a free video. Obviously, you've got to deliver on that promise and give them that. So usually the first email they get from you, as soon as they sign up, they may have gone to a thank you page where they could get it or a thank you page where they get some kind of offer, which I'll talk about next. Um, but usually the first email they get will say, you know, hey, here's your free thing. Um, I would always advise as well, because people don't always get the initial email. They might get lost somewhere. They might overlook it. Um, usually the next day, send them another email saying, hey, did you get the report? Hey, did you get the video? If not, it's here. So give them a second chance to get it. Second thing you may want to do relating to what we said earlier is make them an offer. So this is for the people, this usually the small percentage of people who are ready to take action straight away. So you want to be making that offer in a way that's not so salesy and pushy that it really annoys everyone else uh, who could be great clients in the future, but who aren't ready to do something straight away. So usually what I'll do is I'll make that offer in the same email, um, initially in the same email as I uh, deliver the, the freebie they got when they signed up, the lead magnet. So I might put a PS and say, PS, have you seen this? And usually what I'll do is, because my stuff is a low cost um, entry level product that I offer people, um, it's you know, $7 or $17, depending on the situation. You know, that, that it's, it's so low cost and it's guaranteed anyway. There's no risk involved. I can make that offer. It's not really going to annoy anyone. A decent percentage of people are going to take it. Um, so I'll put that in a, in a PS and say, you know, here's your um, PDF. By the way, have you seen this? With a link to a page where they can go and see a video about the offer. I'll then repeat that offer a couple of times in the next few emails, either in a PS and in, in, in an email where I'm giving some content and some value um, or a kind of, you know, hey, the offer runs out today, just one short email if they haven't bought already. 
So you may want to offer, um, give them an offer. You know, if you do one-to-one -one coaching or something like that, or group coaching, what you might want to do is offer them to come on a webinar with you. So you do a webinar with, you know, 10, 20, 30, if you're lucky, 100 people, etc. once a month, once every couple of weeks, or maybe even an automated webinar where they can come along. Um, you'll add tremendous value on the webinar. You give them even more information and value in the areas they're, they're struggling with. And at the end of the webinar, you offer um, a strategy session or to talk to you about joining your group coaching program. So the offer maybe to join a webinar. Third, and really important of course, is you need to be offering value. So um, the vast majority of people won't be ready to buy when they first join your email list, so you need to be delivering tremendous value to them in that initial sequence of autoresponders. And that's where your knowledge of their problems, their challenges, um, their issues, their goals, their aspirations comes in because those are the things you want to write about in your initial emails. You'll usually want to relate it to the lead magnet you offered. So if you're a procurement consultant and your lead magnet was a checklist of the five big risks in procurement, maybe you want to write an email for each of those risks and expand on what they are and how to mitigate them. Maybe what you also want to do is if, um, if your services go a lot wider than just that initial lead magnet, you want to cover a few topics um, that broaden their perspective on what it is you have to offer. So always you want emails and probably the majority of the emails in your initial autoresponder sequence to be giving value, giving them useful information about things that they care about. Now you can make an offer at the end in a PS and stuff like that. In fact, I would advise doing that, but always make sure you're adding value. So you're building that credibility and trust. You're building that goodwill as they get your initial emails. Next thing you want to do is you want to engage. So you don't want people just to become passive consumers of your email. So an email comes in, they read it, they move on to the next email. Email comes in, they read it, they move on to the next email. Because that gets them used to just, just reading your emails and not really taking any action. You want them to get used to taking action so that when you are asking them to do something, when they are ready to buy, they'll be ready to take action on that. So um, ways of engaging, you might ask them to take a survey. You might just say, you know, hey, you know, hit reply and tell me what your biggest problem is. And you'll get some interaction through email there. You might ask them to fill a, a survey in about their big challenges or what kind of emails they'd like to get from you. You might ask them to just go in and go into a blog post, watch a video or something like that. So get used to clicking or to hit like when they get there on the uh, on the social media sharing or whatever it might be. But get them used to taking action um, in your emails. And you also want to engage by building more of a personal relationship. So usually early on, usually about the second email I send after delivering um, the initial lead magnet that they've signed up for, is they get a second email from me, which kind of says a little bit more about me. It's got a picture of me in there, it gives it very small. I mean, I don't, I don't obsess about me. It's really more about them and the value they get. But it mentions a little bit about why I'm doing what I'm doing and how I can deliver value to them. So I'm building a little bit more of a personal relationship. And of course, as you go through writing the emails that add value, etc., try and throw in personal stories about how you overcame the same sort of challenges you're helping them with. Stuff like that helps to build that personal relationship. Finally is positioning. So if you think about that big goal you have um, for the bulk of your people to kind of build credibility and trust and build a strong relationship, what you want to think of is at the end of that email order responder sequence, what do I want, want them to think about me? What do I want them to know and feel about me? So do I want them to, to think that I'm a real expert in my field or I've got very practical experience? I've done this before for other people like them. Do I want them to think that I'd be a really great guy to work with? So think that through and then throughout these emails you're writing that deliver value and engage and make offers, etc. Bear that in mind in terms of how you write those emails. So if you're adding value by sending them useful tips about a particular topic, and your positioning is you want to be seen as a really experienced, kind of grey-haired professional in that area who can hold their hand and walk them through it yourself because you've done it before, then use a lot of examples and case studies of um, when you're giving the tips of how you did that before in your own previous life or some clients you may have helped uh, do the same thing. By using those case studies and those examples, you're positioning, you're giving them the useful information and the value, but you're also positioning yourself as being someone who's done it before yourself. If you want to come across as being you know, a fun person to work with, then the style of the email you write, maybe you share a video and you're kind of uh, quite upbeat on the video. Maybe you write kind of a fun couple of emails um, where you're giving them tips and value again, but you're drawing analogies with uh, you know, a TV series or a book or a film or Fifty Shades of Grey, whatever it might be. Um, but you're getting across that kind of humour and I would be good to work with type stuff in there. 
So those are the big five things to think about whenever you're writing an autoresponder sequence. Deliver on what you promised, make an offer if that's appropriate, always be delivering value and engaging as you go through in every in every email um, and think about your positioning where you, what you want them to think about you by the end of the autoresponder sequence um, because obviously you're building credibility you're building trust you're building a relationship in those emails so what is that relationship you want to build do you want to be seen as the gray-haired expert do you want to, want to be seen as the genius with brilliant ideas do you want to be seen as a fun person to work with maybe all three maybe not um, but see how you can get that across in the way that you write those initial emails. That's it for this week's Q&A. Um, do send your emails in to me. Um, in the email you got to come to this blog post, if you're a, a, an email subscriber, um, you'll see a link where you can go and put your question to me. So do do that um, and maybe your question will be the one I answer next week. See you soon.